Welcome to this second part of our lecture video about evaluating limits of functions. Sa part 2, ang uri ng functions na hahanapan natin ng limit ay mga exponential functions. Kaya nito mga to. Mga logarithmic functions, kagaya nito. And finally, mga trigonometric functions, kagaya naman itong dalawa. Right? We have nine examples. Subukan natin na gawing mas maikli yung ating video. So yung idea natin sa pag evaluate ng limit, magagawa mo sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng graph, ng tables, o ng simpleng pag-plug in ng value na ito, natawag natin A, ina-approach ni X sa lahat ng X ng ating function. Kung may makuha kang definite value, yun na yung limit ng certain function na iyon. Sa so video na to hindi tayo gagamit ng graph. Hindi tayo gagamit ng table. Tingnan natin kung paano natin hinahanap yung limit. Kung i-apply lang natin yung alam natin sa algebra. Una nating example we have to evaluate the limit of 3 raised to x as x approaches positive 2. So this is an exponential function. Pansinin na yung... In um, dependent variable natin ay exponent. Ganun din dito sa iba nating examples. Tingnan natin kung anong makuha nating value. Kung ipa-plug in natin agad itong value na ina-approach ni x sa lahat ng x ng ating function. We have 3 squared. Agad-agad may makuha tayong definite value. Which is 9. So hindi mo na kailangan gumawa ng ibang paraan. Kasi yung 9 ay hindi indeterminate form. Kasi ang definite value, merong sense yung 9. So, yun yung ating tamang sagot. Hindi na rin naman natin kayang simplify yung 3 raised to x. So, lagi nating huling option ay i-plug in yung value ni a sa lahat ng x ng expression. Sa example 2 natin, we have to evaluate the limit of x minus e raised to x plus 1. Yung e dito ay isang mathematical constant. Tawag natin dyan ay Euler's constant. Pero hindi naman natin kailangan alamin ay plug in yung value nun. Simplify lang natin yung expression if possible and then we plug in the value that x is approaching sa lahat ng x ng ating function. So if x approaches 1 here, we actually have 1 minus e raised to 1 plus 1. Simplify natin yung exponent ni e. This is now e squared. Can we do something about this? Hindi na natin pwedeng isubtract si e squared mula kay 1. Dahil hindi na nga natin ipa-plug in yung value ng constant na to. So, tanggapin na natin to bilang ating final answer. Example 3 naman. May Euler's constant ulit. Meron ulit letter e. Pero may exponent siyang x. May denominator pang x. At namin daw ang limit ng function na yan as x approaches 0. So let's try plugging in 0 for x. We have e raised to 0 over 0. Yung e raised to 0 na yan, ang nagiging value niyan since any number raised to 0 is 1. So lagay na natin yung 1. Pero yung denominator natin, 0 talaga yon And we know that anything divided by 0 is undefined. Kung i-graph natin yan, malalaman natin na yung limit ng function na yan habang yung value ni x ay palapit ng palapit sa 0, nakikita natin yung sagot na infinite. Back, the approach is negative infinity. Kung gusto mo yung i-graph, may kita mo na pababa yun. Habang lumalapit yung x sa 0, this is 0, right? The origin. Habang ito palapit ng palapit dun, Eh, hindi naman siya tuluyang didikit. So, magiging zero talaga yan. Ay, magiging negative infinity to be exact. Our final answer. You don't need to write negative. Pero kung gusto mo, dahil nakita mo yung graph, ayos lang din naman. How about number three? I mean four. Ito. Yung number four natin, siyang special case. Kasi... Kung susubukan natin i-plug in, 
being 0, we have e raised to 0 minus 1 over 0. This is 1, right? Minus 1 is 0 over 0. This is an indeterminate form. Ayaw natin yan dahil walang sense yan. Hindi yan makakatulong para sa ano mang gusto mong gawin sa function na to. So, kung hindi natin pwedeng diretsong i-plug in, how about we try and simplify. Ang problema, this is e raised to x minus 1 na din divide ng isang variable. And again, we cannot do anything about this. Maybe we can use graphical method or the tabular method. But again, to save some time, eh, ayan yung sabihin ko na lang sa inyo ang limit ng function na ito as x approaches 0. Palagi yung the approach, either i-check mo yung limit niya from left to right, no, palaging ang sagot ay positive 1. Ayan yung magiging value. If you try and plug in numbers, palapit ng palapit sa 0. So, from left of 0, gagamitin mo of course mga negative numbers. Right of 0, mga positive numbers. Habang lumalapit ka sa 0, mapapansin mo na yung output value ay eh, palapit ng palapit sa positive 1. The logarithmic function, parehas lang ang idea pero hayaan yung maipakita ko sa inyo yung ilan sa mga posibleng maging itsura ng mga functions na hahanapan mo ng limit. Evaluate the limit of logarithmic of x, logarithm of x as x approaches 2. Alam natin na kapag walang nakalagay na base, may default yan is 10. Pero hindi na natin kailang isulat yun kasi yun nga yung default. Kung wala nakasulat, automatically, then yung base. We try and plug in 2 here. Alam natin, makukuha natin yung sagot na log of 2. You don't need to rewrite this into exponential para mahanap lang yung 2 raised to 10. Yung log 2 ay sapat na bilang sagot. So number 6, we have limit of x minus ln x plus 1 as x approaches 1. Ano itong ln dito? Yung ln dyan ay isang natural logarithm. Ibig sabihin lang nun, log base e. Yung base na b, e yung base nyan. Kung i-rewrite kayang ln, ganito yung magiging itsura nyan. Subukan natin i-plug in yung value na ina-approach ni x sa lahat ng x ng function para mahanap natin yung limit. So, if x approaches 1, we have 1 minus ln 1 plus 1. Let's see. We have here 1 plus 1. So, maybe this is 1 ln 2. 1 minus natural logarithm of 2. Inumbahin ko yung 1 dito sa isang 1. This will be our final answer. Again, you can do something about this. Example 7 natin. We have to evaluate the limit of 5 minus ln x as x approaches 0. Same thing. Try and plug in the value na ina-approach ni x sa lahat ng x ng function. So we have 5 minus ln 0. 5 minus ln 0. If you try and use your calculator to compute for the log base e of 0 or basically ln 0 makikita mo na ang makukuha mong sagot ay undefined alam natin na kapag undefined nasulat lang natin yung infinite symbol because if you try and graph this function makikita natin na walang certain y value na tatamaan siya will just go on forever either pataas or Specifically, itong ln 
zero ay magiging negative infinity. So if you think about it, dapat lagyan ko ng minus sign yan. Now we have 5 minus a negative infinite. Infinity, negative infinity. We simplify yan. Pwede mong i-distribute yung minus sign dun sa negative sign. So this is actually 5 plus positive infinity. Infinite na nga, dagdagan mo pa ng 5, this will just get bigger. Or simply, positive infinity. Again, some of these may appear to be ambiguous, pero kung i-graph mo yan using your graphing calculator or yung Desmos, unawaan mo na may sense itong mga value na nakuha natin. So, huling dalawang example natin, ito ay mga halimbawa ng trigonometric functions na hahanapan natin ang limit. Kung ito ay mga normal lang na trig function, same idea applies. You plug in the value that x is actually approaching sa lahat ng x ng function. Pero itong dalawa kong ipapakita ay special cases. Notice, na if you plug in 0 sa lahat ng x ng function, you have sine 0 over 0. Parang... Walang sense yon Pero kung gagamitin mo yung tabular method, you approach this function from left and right, makuha mo yung value na positive 1. Habang, ito namang isa, 1 minus cosine x over x, as x approaches 0, if you try and plug in 0 sa lahat ng x, same thing, parang wala siyang sense if you use the tabular method, na medyo tedious lang, but that's the only way to do that. Hindi posible ito. Makuha mo yung zero ilang sagot. Y value na, ina, na nilalapitan ng function as x gets closer and closer to zero. Kaya yung ipakita ko na ito ngayon kasi makita niyo nyo sila sa marami pang pagkakataon. At least, to save time, alam mo na that sine x over x, x approaches 0, is 1. And y minus cosine x divided by x, as x approaches 0, is 0. Yung kanika nilang mga limits.